hero worship because he's hot? It's like, come on. We are grown ass people reading this book. You're not going to sit and convince me that because this man is six foot five with a huge ass dick, supposedly, that I'm just supposed to swoon? Like, we need something else. He's a dick. As to the reader, he's been a dick the whole time. But I'm supposed to believe that everybody in, in the coffee shop is, like, in love with this guy who is constantly with his head down. Someone who has their head down. I'm sorry, I'm ranting, but this pissed me off so badly. Somebody with their head down is usually perceived as arrogant because they don't care about anything else that's going around them all they care about is what's on their phone they don't care about you or the baristas they just care about what's on their phone that's most important so you don't perceive that person as awesome you look at him like oh god here comes this guy again Welcome to the Novel Universe with your hostesses, Ashley and Dawn. We rate and review the newest and most buzzworthy books. We are true book club girls who don't always agree, but do enjoy a good book discussion. I'm Ashley, the fantasy architect. And I'm Dawn, the criticizer of books. Grab your favorite beverage and come and enjoy our universe. Everybody and welcome back to the Dalva Universe with your hosts Dawn and Ashley. And in today's podcast, we will be discussing the Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren, which is two people. I did not know that. Didn't until, either. <laughs> till a couple days ago, so that's kind of cool. Um, I don't usually start. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, if you're new to the podcast. Ashley and I will start off with a spoiler-free review, and then we will let you know when we go into spoilers. We will talk about our likes and our dislikes, and our next podcast will be Bromance Book Club 4. Isn't it romantic? Isn't it romantic? It's going to be in a couple weeks, so get ready for that one. All right, before we begin, let's find out what the soulmate equation is about, and it is long, so... I should probably skip around this description. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would. <laughs> Single mom Jess Davis is a data and statistician wizard, but no amount, no amount of number crunching can convince her to step back into the dating world. Raised by her grandparents who now help raise her seven-year-old daughter, Juno, Jess has been left behind too often to feel comfortable letting anyone in. After all, her father has never been around. Her hard parting mother disappeared when she was six and her ex decided he wasn't father material before Juno was born. Just holds her loved ones close, but working constantly to stay afloat is hard. There's a motorcycle going by and lonely. But then Jess hears about Genetically, a buzzy new DNA based matching company that predicts, that's predicted to change dating forever. Finding a soulmate through DNA, the reliability of the numbers, this Jess understands, as, oh my God, forget all that. Um, yeah, so she meets a guy through genetically and things happen. Okay, that is a very long description. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't read it because when I did go back and read it, I was like, oh, some of these synopsis are just, they're not done well enough to where you're not going to know the whole entire story of reading the back of the book. Like, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, you might as well have just spilled it all out to me because now I have nothing to look forward to within the book. Yeah. Yeah, I read it after two. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start with our rating. Ashley and I do not discuss the book before we podcast. We have no idea who liked it or who didn't. And we're going to start off with rating. So Ashley, what did you rate the soulmate equation? I gave it a 3.5. Ooh, I gave it a 1. I hated this book. <laughs> I hated it. I knew you would. I was either like, maybe she read this on a good day. Maybe nope. I'll get nice done nope. with it. Oh, Makaji, let's discuss it. Before, before we discuss, I just want to give a disclaimer to all these people who are tuning in to the podcast or to the YouTube and you love the book and you're like, oh, hell no. She just gave it a one. I'm going to click out. Don't click out yet because this book isn't horrible. It's just, I don't like the writing style. So this book is a me problem and not necessarily the book problem. It's not like problematic or anything. It's just not my jam. 
So I just wanted to put that out there. And that's okay, though. It is. This is why, this is what makes for a good book discussion. This is why Don and I usually have great discussions. Is because <laughs> we're either at two opposite ends of the polar pole, or we agree, which is like, what in the world? Yeah. Where did that come from? So, okay. Dislikes. I'm, I'm sure you have a whole list. <laughs> I do. Okay, well, I'll start. Um, this book, one of the, my biggest problems with this specific style of writing is that it, it becomes super formulaic when you read a book of this genre. And yes, I know it's about the journey and how they get there, but there were some moments in this book where it could have been even better if it wasn't so formulaic. You could definitely tell that, you know, there's this enemies to lovers trope that happens and, you know, there's going to be a crisis and then, you know, they're going to fall in love with each Like it's, it's very formulaic and it's, I'm all for the journey. Okay. But there were moments that I feel like the book lacked because of how formulaic it was. And that is my biggest issue. It was a Hallmark movie. And I'm not shitting on Hallmark movies. There's nothing wrong with Hallmark movies if you like that style of writing. Hallmark movies are very sweet. You know what you're going to get going into it. It's going to be a couple and they meet. And there's going to be a, you know, a falling out. And then they fall in love at the end. And it's all the same, like you said, formula. But then what they do is they just put in a different white couple. Mm -hmm. And then maybe there's... A quirky black best friend maybe but it's all just very like cut and paste yep. cut and paste and this was cut and paste and if you like that that's great but I don't I like a little bit more critique in the books that I read because that's enjoyable for me and it was all very predictable I did not read the synopsis so I predicted every beat including what was in the synopsis but I predicted pretty much everything that happened in this book that's terrible I shouldn't go in knowing how the book is going to end and there was a point in the book where I was like I could have written this and I am not a writer but I felt like I could have written this book and mm -hmm. sold hundreds and thousands of copies just Come on, you're the, the wrong field <laughs> the writing the writing was just really simple and there was just like no imagination to this writing at all so okay. Okay. I just I'm a little bit more fierce than I was with it, but hey, generally, <laughs> yeah, just uh, there. Uh, here is my I didn't have a whole lot of nitpicks with this book, like a lot of big things that I didn't like about it. There was like more smaller issues. The biggest one for me, like I said, was the formula style writing of this book was like, okay, you've seen it. Um, my biggest thing is that we, the, the, the two people that are put together, Jess and River, they're supposed to be really smart people, like super duper smart people. Like R River is like the, the owner of this genetic alley place and Jess is a statistician. Like she does and crunches numbers all the time. Right. And so the whole process of genetic alley is that you're supposed to be paired with someone that is going to be super compatible to you. And it's like, okay, that's awesome. Where is the deepness in their relationship? It was what I was missing. It was like, there was a lot of moments where you're like, oh, that's super sweet and cute. And I, I like it, but it was like, there wasn't this deep intimacy that I was expecting to feel from finding my soulmate but you know it's like yet again I I did enjoy the read but if I had to pick out some things that could have made this book better that was another one is that you're supposed to be your, your, your soulmate like get into that for me let's go look past appearances and like minor things mm -hmm. that you somehow just get along with each other it's like okay that was nice because now you're you know bridging me into it but I felt like I was still on on my way there and I didn't quite get the deep connection that you're supposed to get 
right? Yeah. Um, I, I, I think we've moved on to the romance section of the book. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I thought the, the romance was boring and it was too fast. Like, he was kind of a dick to her. And then they have one good date and all of a sudden he's marriage material. It's, it was too quick. Once again, very formulaic with the daughter. I, I, I saw it coming a mile away. Cause it's like, oh, he loves my daughter. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> Take him out for ice cream. It's fine. Yeah. Um, there was a moment that I noted that kind of, I, I couldn't understand what, what this was supposed to mean. So it was when they were going, I think it was when they were going to this red carpet event at somebody's house. And he leans over to her and he says, did you think of me when you put on that dress? And I was like, what am I supposed to get from that? Is that supposed to be hot? I think the, I think the intention of it was supposed to be like sexy, like, what are you thinking of me when you put on that dress? Like really like smoldering. But what I got from it was like, I'm awesome. And like, was I important? Like, like you should be only, I don't know. It was just, it just came across as a bit of a narcissist. Just like, okay. who are you? And what do you, who do you think you are where I should be thinking of you when I'm putting on my dress? Like, I, I think I took it the wrong way, but because I wasn't feeling the romance, it didn't connect. It didn't come off as hot. It came off as I'm the shit and you should know it. I, it, I, I had to read that part a couple times as I was like, I don't understand what that means. I literally said, I don't, I put in my notes. I don't understand what that means. I don't know what that means. Oh, that's amazing. I thought it was cute. <laughs> oh, I mean, at, at towards the towards the end of that whole exchange, he was like, "I was thinking of you," and I was brushing my teeth or some bullshit. And I was like, "Oh, okay." He's like, he's opening up. I get it. But at first, I was like, he first you take this work. introvert who has <laughs> zero personality, and then you make him say this thing. What, like, where did that charming guy? Where was this charming guy the whole time? He just comes out of nowhere, and then I get really confused when he busts something out like that. I just. Okay. Yeah. So my next like little nitpick with this would be. Oh wait 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 wait. We're not at nitpicks yet. I have like I have dislikes like major stuff. Oh, I'm on to nitpicks. Well, I haven't said hey, what nitpicks. I dislike I yet. Keep going, keep going <laughs> with your list of dislikes. I haven't <laughs> even said what I disliked yet. I've been going off of you. <laughs> what? We go back and forth. <laughs> We usually go back and forth, and I haven't gone yet. Go. Go. <laughs> okay, so can we talk about these characters? Because I didn't like any of them. And that's another major problem. Usually I can, I can latch on to something. <laughs> so, okay. So, <laughs> um, okay, Jess. She was fine but she was also forgettable. Like I've read this woman before. She's, you know, she's hairy, she's a single mom. She's constantly comparing herself to other women. How come she looks all put together and her hair is shiny and beautiful and I'm in my sweats all the time. And I'm like, okay, so what are you gonna do with that? And I don't know if I missed it, but I'm waiting for her to either be like, I'm going to put on some pants or I'm, I'm comfortable in my sweats and I don't care who knows it. But I felt like that never happened. And I only mentioned that because she said it so many times. I was waiting for some growth there and it just didn't happen. She just kept mentioning, which, which I think it could have been, I think the author could have done something with that because if she's a single mom and she feels like low self-worth, and that's her that's part of her character is you know she doesn't feel like she has it together then and she feels like she always looks like a schlub then either change or accept it but that theme just evaporated <laughs> 
So I had an issue with Jess's mom. I did not like that little segue into some sort of something. I'm not going to split it. But I just felt that it was unnecessary because I was expecting something else to happen to be like the the big moment where Jess grows up, if you will. And that moment was not for me. Nope. It was very dull. I you you could have completely sideswiped that whole entire interaction. Um that was one of my things that I was like, I just because when it when it would come up in the story, I was like, can we not right now? I yeah. don't understand this is important because it's not I it added to something, but not nearly as much as you would warrant something to add to the growth of a character. Yeah. I think that that was the main role of her, and it just didn't quite hit it for me. Uh, do you want to keep going? Yeah, I, I agree. I think that was a huge missed opportunity. Um, there was no growth there. We can't really talk about it because of spoiler, but yeah, that was that was a huge problem. Yeah. If she hadn't have been in the story, it, I say this all the time. If this hadn't happened in the story, it would not have changed the story at all. It would not have impacted it at all. That's a problem. A major character should impact the character that, you know, it's supposed to or the story as a whole. And if it doesn't, then don't then don't put it in there. There's no reason for it. So I feel like never mind, I'm not going to say it, but whatever. Yeah. Let's we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> to fizzy fizzy okay okay um this girl is supposed to be the comic relief i never laughed like ever um and she is she's supposed to be like the opposite of she's basically the the quirky the quirky black best friend in the hallmark movies except she's asian she's not she's not black in this she's asian and she's kind of the polar opposite of Jess because she's very confident, she's secure in her sexuality, cool. However, I've read that before. It's in every best friend book. There's always a buddy that's really different from the main character. If there's no nuance in your book, I don't wanna read it because I've already read it before in other books. Why do I need to read your book? What makes your book special? And I have to say this one thing. So, oh my God, this woman is 35 years old and we are not the most mature people all the time, but they go into the genetically office and there's a a person who works there named Butt Kiss. That is low hanging fruit. Okay. I, I, I love a good, that's what she said joke. I will laugh every time, but that's what she said jokes are not low hanging fruit. Those can be quite you know weighty they let's take some thought in some of those you have to be quick you have to have good timing with those jokes butt kiss are we six oh. not the same thing with that name in particular i was like seriously we threw uh that's what she said joke in there like no. that's what it felt like with, no like, that's what she said like jokes that. are good this was this was this immature this was a dead one because I've been like her butt kiss before. But see, I liked Fizzy. However, she is your standard like uh, sidekick friend, you know, that is everything that you're not of a person. But there were a lot of things that Fizzy said that I was personally like cracking up at just because it just hit a chord for me and i'm sorry it didn't hit a chord for you it did not i really enjoyed her personality no I chords were hit over here <laughs> all right let's talk about river river my biggest thing with river i wished he had a pov and I say this because I feel like I would have liked him better as the male in the story. I really do. I feel like there were some missed opportunities there. That's a problem with writing. If you can't convey a character 
without them having a POV, then that's a problem. You should be able to do that if you're a successful writer. I'm sorry. I know that's a little harsh, but we've read plenty of books where they don't have their POV and you're like swooning over the guy, the, the lead. And the huh? beginning, Mr. Americano, which yeah. I love that, by the way, because it's like, you know, how many times do you sit and people watch somebody in your normal setting or whatever, and you've got names for everybody, and you already have decided what they do for a living, how they act, how they're in bed, you know, the whole nine yards. Like, you've already got it. Like, that part I liked. But yet again, it's like when we're, we're doing this whole enemies to lovers thing, like, okay. Okay, so once again, I have a, a quote. Well, I described him as hot Sheldon Cooper with no personality. Um, for those of you, he's from the Big Bang Theory. He's the, the nerdy. Well, they're all nerds, but the main nerd. Uh, I think the problem with him was that it was all tell and no show. And at this point in the book, I was done. This part I'm about to say, I was just done. And I think it comes pretty early in the book because they've, I think they met him already, like the first time they had their first interaction with him, but they're still not, I don't think they're dating yet. And so, um, let me set the scene. Okay. So they're in this coffee. They, they, they all visit this coffee shop pretty regularly. Uh, River does too. He comes in at the same time, all the time. He walks in, he's constantly on his phone. He's constantly looking down on his phone and he orders his drink or whatever. And this is how Jess describes him as he has entered. And re remember, we, we he's still in his douchey phase of the book. Yes, he's great to look at, but there seem to be more to the weight of their attention, meaning the rest of the people in the coffee shop. Like the low humming vibration of hero worship. Okay, I have something to say about this. This guy is an introvert. Nobody hero worships an introvert. I'm an introvert, so I feel like I can say it. This guy comes into the coffee shop every day. His head is down in his phone. He's not engaging with anybody in line. He doesn't engage with the baristas. He has no personality. Technically, what should happen, this person who is the hero worship should be charming. Says hello to everyone when he walks in, smiles. He's not looking at his phone. His head is up. He's chatting with the baristas. No, Susie, I don't want a muffin. You know what I mean? This guy, nothing. Hero worship because he's hot? It's like, come on. We are grown ass people reading this book. You're not going to say and convince me that because this man is six foot five with a huge ass dick, supposedly, that I'm just supposed to swoon? Like, we need something else. He's a dick. As to the reader, he's been a dick the whole time, but I'm supposed to believe that everybody in, in the coffee shop is like in love with this guy who is constantly with his head down. Someone who has their head down, I'm sorry, I'm ranting, but this pissed me off so badly. Somebody with their head down is usually perceived as arrogant because they don't care about anything else that's going around them. All they care about is what's on their phone. They don't care about you or the baristas. They just care about what's on their phone. That's most important. So you don't perceive that person as awesome. You look at him like, oh God, here comes this guy again on his fucking phone all the time. We but all hate that guy. Can't he be like hidden sexy though? No. No? No, I'm sorry. Okay, Ashley, set, set the scene. You're at Starbucks. <laughs> you go to Starbucks every day and this guy walks in. He walks in on his phone, orders his drink and walks out every every day are you worshiping him are you like oh that guy is hot no no because no. he's always on his phone we all see that person who's always got their head down in their phone at the starbucks in their nice suit ignoring everybody but their phone and nobody is like salivating or hero i mean i understand if they're attractive and you're like oh he's attractive but hero worship Hero worship. Those two words got me. Hero worship. Must have missed that part because, yeah. It bothers me because 
this is a romance and I should be I should be buying into the hotness of this guy but I'm just being told that he's that he's so sexy that people worship him no you know who was hotter than him old dude in the people we meet on vacation what was his name Alex oh, Alex yeah he was hotter than this guy he had way more personality than this guy well he did that's for sure I'm sorry for that long rant, but oh my god. All right. That's all I have. I do have one nitpick. I do have one nitpick. Okay. It's nitpicking time it's for nitpicking dime. time. Did you finish your nitpicks? Girl, you just walked all over my nitpicks. <laughs> you just keep going. Okay. <laughs> I, I, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is no... <laughs> I only have one nitpick. So I, okay. I I notice little stuff like quotes like that. I have to say, when I'm bored with the book and nothing is grabbing me, like the characters aren't grabbing me, the story, I don't even buy into this whole genetically DNA bullshit. I'm not buying into the premise either. Then I find other things to occupy me and it's usually dumb shit. Like that stupid quote that I just said with the hero worship. Like, okay. because I have nothing else to focus on. Okay. I want to talk about the daughter for a second. Because, oh, Juno? Yes, Juno. Okay. Okay. This is the smartest seventh-year-old I have ever met in my fucking life. No. <laughs> okay, so there is a point in this book where... So she's dating, oh boy, and they were on the cover of, like, their local newspaper or whatever. And Juno goes to the library with her, with her grandfather every day. And this is supposed to be a fun, adventurous, lighthearted moment between Jess and Fizzy. And they're running into the library because they don't want Juno to see the Tribune cover. She's seven. I don't know a seven-year-old who's looking at the Tribune, first of all. So I have to mention this as well. They walk in and Fizzy says, I'm a librarian, by the way. I work in a library. She says oh my god am i gonna get in trouble i haven't renewed my library and she was not kidding i wasn't laughing that wasn't funny so they run in kind of harried because she doesn't want her seven-year-old daughter to see her on the cover of this tribune in libraries the youth department and the adult department are on two sides of the library they are not on the same side if grandpa is gonna go get his newspaper first it's probably up high that seven-year-old is looking around walking she not looking at the newspapers. She is doing her own thing, being a little pain in the butt, running around the adult department before she can head over to the youth department and go play. That was the first one. The second one. Oh my goodness, the Today Show was on. I don't want Juno to see me on the Today Show because seven-year-olds watch the Today Show at seven o'clock in the morning. Watch it. I know some that do. That with, was not abnormal for me because there are some that do. There at are some seven? That do paper. Yes. Yes. With your parent, are you just like, oop, got to get my Cheerios and watch the Today Show? Mm-hmm. Well, she's with her, her nan and her papa, like, all the time. That's what they do. They read the newspaper. They watch the 7 a.m. Today Show. Like, it's a normal thing because of the, the family aspect that she's been like engrossed in okay we'll sp- explain this I one i'll give you i'll give you that i'll give you that but explain this one she's on the cover of people magazine and <laughs> mom says i'm shocked that her little friends haven't mentioned it yet because they're reading people magazine over at the recess eating their, <laughs> eating their, for eating their sandwiches because no, they know what her mom looks that, like that one no no, okay. the Tribune and the Today Show, I'm like, mm, no. I do know seven-year-olds that do that because of their family dynamic. But the People magazine, unless your mama's bringing it on the subway, I don't know, like, how else they're going to be looking at it. It's not, like, it's a highlights magazine that no. they're engrossed in no. stuff and circling all the things that they can find. And when I was so. seven-year-old, I wasn't, I didn't know who my friend's mom looked like. I may have seen her a couple times, but I'm not going to be like, oh, hey, your mama's on the cover of a... <laughs> I don't know what your mama look like i've seen her twice and the last one maybe you can explain this one away too this girl is at the grocery store talking about 
I want cinnamon toast crunch and tricks. I used to be a tutor. Second graders have sight words. Those sight words are not cinnamon and they're not tricks, which is spelled wrong. Maybe she's really, really, really smart, but it took me out of the fact that she's seven. She's seven, but she's reading Cinnamon Toast Crunch and Tricks and watching the Today Show and reading People Magazine and the Tribune. I have some seven-year-olds that I have personally tutored as well that are at a sixth grade reading level. Okay. So, I mean, it is, it's not, it's not abnormal, but because she's seen as such this like oddity for being so smart it's almost overkill in some aspects because it's like everything she just blurts out information and you're just like what? well a lot of kids do that like they just regurgitate what their grandfather tells them like i could see her being like oh brothel started from roller coasters i could see a kid doing that because they just hear it and they just repeat it let's see that that scene in particular was too much for me i'm like you won't let your seven-year-old daughter watch a brothel like documentary about roller coasters no well no, they no, read no. the tribune together and watch the today show <laughs> that that one was not overstepping bounds for me on just how much she's so ridiculously smart <laughs> all right all right. Okay, so well, since Don doesn't have any likes, I do. <laughs> um, I did enjoy the idea of like connecting with someone via DNA because when you think about the the chance that that I could lead someone into finding that soulmate person, it would be rather cool. Um, and I. I did like Juno a lot. I loved her quirkiness, the daughter. I loved how dedicated Jess was to her daughter and didn't kind of like, like shadow her from real life experiences. She explained things to her, which I thought was super important. There was a few moments in the book that there is a high crisis situation and she basically is like, okay, just, you know, you might see this, this, and this, this is what's going to happen. Yada, yada, yada. Um, I did like the fact that this, this book was everything you hope for, for me personally, and having a light, easy read. I know I've been saying it a lot in the past, like, month and a half, but I'm really thoroughly enjoying these more lighter, laughable moments. Like, it, it's not so deep and intense, and I think that's why I'm just, like, gobbling it up, because... Usually, I read a lot of intense fantasy worlds, and there is so many different things going on. All these different kingdoms and tribes you got to worry about and names, and you know who did this and who passed that. And so, to me, it's just it's so nice to just read something that I'm literally sitting down and just laughing at because it's like hella cheese, but it's good cheese, like we say all the time. I enjoyed the cheese with it. Um, I did like the fact that. We, we do see that River is not so much of a douchebag in these higher intense situations that he steps in like every woman would hope that a guy would step in for. Not being asked, just doing. There's one part in the book where, you know, there's something that, that happened and, you know, Jess is freaking out and he literally just says, you know what, we're going to make a list. This is what we're going to do first. What would you like to do first? I'm going to take care of this. Like, just way to fizzle out the situation. As someone who is happily married, that that is what every married woman wants from her husband in a crazy situation that is happening. You want someone who's going to help you navigate through those waters. And I do think that he showed up when he needed to show up. Now he did have some fun. But I still did enjoy that part at least especially there's like a few scenes where you're just like ah, I love so much but yeah and I loved the family aspect of her with her grandparents and how much they were just 
the epitome of a family that has stuck together and it's there for each other. And I really like the look of her. So. But I wanted to play a quick game, Don. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Genetic Alley, as we had said before, it is a test that you take that literally takes 35 different DNA strand alleles like to match you up with a soulmate, right? Mm. So Don, I'm going to ask you, what are the three things you look for in someone that is not not just physical attraction um sense of humor is first okay second is respectful of women I ain't, ain't nobody got time for no misogynist <laughs> shenanigans nobody got time for that and um just well not everybody's gonna be confident so that's not um i don't know i think those are just the two basic things it's just sense of humor uh, well intelligence i don't i don't want no dummies <laughs> I know that's mean, but like, you gotta have a conversation. You gotta be able to carry a, a an intellectual conversation. Mm -hmm. And somebody who is more introverted, do you look for someone who is more extroverted? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No. Cool. Just curious. I thought it could be a fun game for us to play. So for me, my top things besides like physical attractions that whole point of uh, genetic alley is not the physical mm -hmm. attraction aside um for me is um a deep intimacy in conversations i really enjoy having someone who is willing to go like really deep with me and really pick things apart and like let's talk about it um someone who lifts me up of a per like and respects me that is like num like number two there. Somebody's gonna continue to let me reach my own sky, and it's totally fine. However, I need to do it. Um, and someone who is just that someone that you're able to be with without having to say anything at all. Like you're just comfortable with that person to just be present with them, versus having to like pull out all these things. So do you think you need, do you think that genetics could find you a soulmate? I think so. I think so, they, that it, it could lead you to someone who has certain tendencies that are very similar or compatible to yours. But a lot of times people look for, there has to be like some sort of spark, physical attraction. Yeah. Thank you for joining us for the spoiler-free edition of, what's this called? The Novel Universe. And our next podcast will be, uh, what's it called? Isn't I, it romantic? Isn't it romantic? By I Lisa K. Yeah. Adams. Yes. And if you're not sticking around, thank you for joining us, and we'll catch you in the next podcast. And we are going to spart... Spart? No. Spart. And we are going to... We are going to start the spoiler edition in five, four, three, two, one. I don't know what that buzzing was. Okay. We are going to be spoiling the soulmate equation. So what do you, yeah. what do you want to talk about first? Okay. Well, uh, I guess we can. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Where do you want to well, start? Okay, I guess we. I feel like we have to talk about the big, the big moment where she realizes there was a mistake. I guess that's uh, the obvious place to start. Yes. Okay. Didn't see that coming. I really didn't. And then when it was revealed that there was a huge mistake in their data, I was like, oh, it does make sense. I thought that her that Joe's dad was going to show up that is what I thought I had been predicting it and I was going to be really upset 
if it did happen because they talk about it all the time about how like he decided he didn't want anything to do with her and um it was a good setup though because she was in the Tribune, she was on People Magazine, the Today Show. Like I'm like he has to know what her name is. Like, do you know what I mean? So I thought that that was gonna happen, and then when you found out that like they actually were not diamond matches, I was like, oh, I kind of like that. What about you? Um, that one I did not predict. Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> kind of? Okay. Yeah, so I didn't predict that, that it was not going to be a match. But I predicted that it was going to go in that direction because I thought they were going to get into the whole topic of, which they didn't, but you don't need a DNA to find your soulmate. I felt like a better theme coming out of this book would be, you know, finding your soulmate. You can't find a soulmate through spit. Like, there has to be other things that contribute to a soulmate. And I thought that that's where they were going with the grandparents. Okay. And be like, oh, look at my grandparents. They've been together all this time. They're soulmates. They didn't need genetically to do that. But then after the grandma broke her hip or whatever, the grandparents just disappeared from the book. I was just like, oh. <laughs> so they So grandma's hip was basically just a way to force the romance don't like that I didn't like that so I mean did we know what their match level ended up being no because she didn't want to know okay because I still feel like they were what's the one after diamond or before diamond like a platinum match or a gold match or something I don't know because I had like all these different levels you had base match silver match like whatever like it went through all the things that like you would enjoy going on a date with this person you know oh maybe they're good in bed or like you your probability of being with them for you know at least a year or two based on your dna (laughs) you know but it's at the same time i did like the fact that both characters were presented with you know we are not diamond matches but they were high enough though that River was still convinced that his process of his dating, you know, theory was going to work out for the most part. Well, it had to. They put in millions of dollars. Yeah. He wasn't just going to be like, whoopsies, this isn't going to work, peace. Yeah, but I did like the fact that he was, as someone who, you know, was relying on science to tell him yes or no, had to really come to terms with like but I love this person and this person makes me happy makes me feel like I can be my own my best self around them um and he was faced with that so I did like that but I don't like how it was handled I feel like that conflict was awful just awful like the whole like I need a minute or I can't be with you right now and he just like walks away doesn't call her and I'm like what what is happening why 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 i didn't again this whole just tell me how you feel i'll just walk away run away from your problems why don't you I don't at all it drives me nuts because a lot of romance books are like that and i'm just like like, are we grown enough to be able to have an adult conversation obviously not no Obviously, we have not crossed that bridge. <laughs> okay. Do we want to talk about Jess's mom? Yeah. Okay. Her whole selling her whole lotion line, crap, borrowing money from Jess, being this deadbeat mom. It's always, like, coming back, and Jess is always giving her money. I thought to myself, girl, why are you giving her money? You know she ain't going to jump out of it. $10,000. $10,000. And that's how much her mom had bought. I'm like, oh, you have a problem. You have a problem. If you give someone $10,000, they're going to come back. Uh-huh. Who I would. They're, Hello. They're, they're, you can drop $10,000 like that. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. 
and that was not growth to me growth would have <laughs> excuse me growth would have been her telling her mom no not I, don't ever ask me again that's not growth because she can go she's for all we know she's gonna come back and she's gonna be like okay no i was really hoping that that would have been the moment for her to like stand up for herself and it didn't happen at all at all nope. but busy and her like <laughs> Her romance books were just cracking me up because she, it reminded me of a scene in Friends where Phoebe is writing her book and she's basically writing her romance after Chandler and Monica, but just using different names and just like goes through it and whatever and says like, oh, I'm going to write that down. You must leave. I just wrote that down. How come you didn't tell us you were writing that down? Like, so. Yeah. And I liked the ballet scene. Oh, so sweet. So sweet. That river took her to her ballet lesson. Uh huh. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the fact that their first restaurant was, like, right around the corner from her house so she could just hop, skiddly boop back home and not have to, like, worry about getting an Uber. <laughs> it's like, you've dated before. Uh, no an easy exit. Yeah. Um, I got nothing. I got nothing. Yeah. There's not, there's, there was no, there was nothing to discuss here. There's no theme here besides... Do you mm -hmm. need DNA to find your soulmate? I think that's the only theme here. I don't, yeah. I got nothing, unfortunately. No, I think that was all that. Oh, and the fact that like River basically like had to fire like his best friends. Like, can you imagine as, if someone from let's just do your line of work from the library tampered with your like thesis if you will of or book dissertation that you have done and they tampered with the whole entire thing and you had no idea and it was supposed to explode or whatever to bring revenue and all this stuff for this launch of this project I was like that is so shady I mean, I wasn't shocked because they were like, woohoo, this is good press. That's what I thought was going to break them up was he was more concerned about the press and not about her. That was my prediction. Okay. <laughs> that was my prediction. I was wrong. But I'm not shocked that they would do that. Okay. I because, was. Yeah. When they, cause they mentioned like the other analysis system being down and I was like, Maybe there's going to be a fault in numbers or something like that, that all of a sudden. When she was discovering the discrepancy or the lie, <laughs> she was using all these scientific words. Were you like lost or were you just like keeping I up? I was a little bit. I was like, dude, okay. this girl smart. Oh my goodness. It's like, where have, where has this just been? You know? That's what I meant by, like, having that deeper connection in a relationship. Like, they're both super smart people. Let's hear them talk about it, shall yeah, we? Yeah, that's a good point. You know, like, that part I was like, have they ever talked numbers? Like, they could just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Have a numbers date or something. I don't even remember any of their conversations besides the one at the end where she had to basically tell him, how to communicate. Other than that, I don't know what they talked about. It was just more of, they were both introverts in a way, so it was like they, they had a, a similarity with each other, common ground. They were both uncomfortable with certain things. That was like, where was the deepness? You know? That's all I have for a spoiler. Yeah. Sorry, guys. It wasn't a lot. I'm sorry. 
I right. know. <laughs> I didn't help the situation. I was just checked out. This is this is gonna be in the top two worst books I read this year. Like this book was horrible. Me problem. Me problem. I don't like books what was like your this. Favorite? Oh man. Yeah, we're gonna have to talk about our our halfway of the year. Yeah, there's a tag called the mid year freak out tag where it's it's like yeah, what it implies is the title. So we can do that. Okay. Awesome. Well, this has been our spoiler edition. Not a whole lot to say, but if you wanted to stick around just to hear the rest of some things that we wanted to talk about, thanks for joining us. Bye.